the basis of the scientists in determining the boundaries between plates. Before we go into that, let us analyze the structure of the Earth. The Layers of the Earth The different layers of the Earth are the crust, mantle, outer core, and inner core. Let us describe each layer. Crust The crust is the thinnest and the outermost layer of the Earth. It is about 5 to 50 kilometers thick. Crust is made up of both continental and oceanic crust. Continental crust is the layer of rock which forms the continents, while oceanic crust is a thin layer of crust that overlies the ocean basins. Continental crust is less dense, mostly granite, thicker, and older than oceanic crust, while oceanic crust is more dense, mostly basalt rock, thinner, and younger than continental crust. Mantle It is the thickest layer of the Earth. It is located below the crust and is about 2,900 kilometers thick. It is composed of silicate rocks rich in magnesium and iron. Its average temperature ranges from 1,000 degrees Celsius to 3,700 degrees Celsius. The intense heat causes the rocks to rise and sink when cool. The outer core. It is the only liquid layer which is 2,300 kilometers thick. It is composed of liquid iron and nickel. It is responsible for the Earth's magnetic field. Its average temperature is 4,000 degrees Celsius to 5,000 degrees Celsius. The inner core A solid ball of metal because of intense pressure. It is 1,200 kilometers thick, made of solid nickel and iron. It is the densest layer of the Earth, and its average temperature is 5,000 degrees Celsius to 6,000 degrees Celsius and high enough to melt everything in the outer core. Further, properties like temperature, depth, and pressure is related in these layers. As depth increases, the temperature and pressure also increases. Now that we know the different layers of the Earth and its characteristics, we will now focus on the layer where we stand in, the crust and the upper mantle, which is collectively known as the Lithosphere. The Earth's Lithosphere. Lithosphere is a solid outer section of the Earth which includes the crust. Also, it includes the cool, dense, rigid upper part of the mantle. Lithosphere is used to explain geologic processes, particularly volcanism, earthquakes, and the formation of various surface features of the Earth, such as volcanoes, mountains, trenches, oceanic ridges, reef valleys, and lakes. The lithosphere is divided into separate plates, called tectonic plates, or lithospheric plates, which move very slowly in response to the convecting part of the mantle. This is in conjunction to the theory of plate tectonics which states that the Earth's lithosphere is separated into plates that move over the asthenosphere, the molten upper portion of the mantle. Here are the tectonic plates that was identified by the scientists. The major plate have an area more than 20 million square kilometers. Pacific Plate 103,300,000 square kilometers. North American Plate, 75,900,000 square kilometers. Eurasian Plate, 67,800,000 square kilometers. African Plate, 61,300,000 square kilometers. Antarctic Plate, 60,900,000 square kilometers. Indo-Australian Plate, 58,900,000 square kilometers. And South American Plate, 
43,600,000 square kilometers. Now, here are some of the minor plates which area is less than 20 million square kilometers. The Philippine Sea Plate, Juan de Puca Plate, Cocos Plate, Nazca Plate, Caribbean Plate, Scotia Plate, Arabian Plate, and Indian Plate. Lithosphere and crust is often interchanged and misused. Lithosphere is composed of crust and upper mantle and is used to explain different geologic processes. While crust is only a part of the lithosphere and it's either continental or oceanic. Using our knowledge in lithosphere, we will now explain how scientists come up with the present location of the plate boundaries. Plate boundaries were not just a hunch for the scientists. It is derived from the data gathered all over the world, from the earthquake epicenters, active volcano, and mountain ranges. Here are the pictures that show the information about destructive earthquakes that meet at least one of the following criteria. Moderate damage, 10 or more deaths, magnitude 7.5 or greater, modified Mercalli intensity 10 or greater, or the earthquake that generated a tsunami. Locations of volcanoes obtained from the Smithsonian Institution's Global Volcanism Program. A color shaded relief visualization of the general bathymetric chart of the ocean's global land and seafloor elevation dataset. And for the reference, the location of the plate boundaries. If we will be putting the pictures on top of each other, the earthquake epicenters, the active volcanoes, the mountain ranges, there will be pattern formed. We can say that the earthquake's epicenter, active volcano, and mountain ranges are not scattered. They are found at a certain location which is the plate boundary. These are the basis of the scientists in determining the plate boundary, and this explains the occurrence of this phenomena. To sum up, the different layers of the Earth are the crust, mantle, outer core, and inner core. Lithosphere is composed of crust and upper mantle and is used to explain different geologic processes. And the location of Earth's epicenter, volcano, and mountain ranges are not scattered. It is found on certain places, which is in the plate boundaries. I hope that you have learned a lot from this lesson, and see you on our next video.